Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Knife Chats with Tobias. Well, I bought this um, Swiss Army Tinker uh, a while back, probably about a month ago. As you see, I have not even opened it yet. Uh, I bought it because I really like the design. I actually had it in my uh, wish list. It, um, it went out of stock and then it came back into stock and I finally went ahead and picked it up. That's how long I debated picking it up. And the primary reason I did not pick it up on the first release is, well, because it's a Tinker. And um, the Tinker is my least favorite of all Victorinox Swiss Army knives. I know a lot of people, um, it is their favorite. And I believe um, the folks at Smoky Mountain Knife Works have stated that it is the best-selling knife um, in the Swiss Army lineup, at least at their store. Um, I'm a big fan of the corkscrew. I don't like the, um, the, uh, back mounted, uh, Phillips driver. I just don't like using it at all. I don't find it that useful. I know a lot of other people swear by it, but I like either an in mounted, um, Phillips driver. Or I just use the, uh, Phillips screwdriver that is part of the can opener. In any case, uh, time to open this knife up because I've got a plan for it. Okay, that'll teach me to uh, try and do everything in one single shot. I actually did manage to open this up with this knife. Uh, and you see, I just sliced it around the edges there and got out the knife. Um, unfortunately, I was so busy talking about this knife that I lost focus. Um, this is a knife that I will be talking about in the near future. It's a little uh, Winchester Bird and Trout knife that I got from John Pierce. He sent this knife to me basically as a bonus knife for a knife that I recently purchased from him. So I'll be talking about that knife in an upcoming video along with the other knife that he sent me with it, which is really cool. But for now, let's get back to uh, this knife here. Now, I'm pretty sure this knife was, um, the, the design on this knife was uh, uh, a product of Brian Wilhoyt. Uh, if I'm wrong, uh, hopefully someone from uh, SMKW will uh, correct me. But I really do like what he has done here, or whoever the designer was. I like the nice big uh, star on the back side here, and the smaller one on the front side here. Now, for those not familiar with what you have here, this is the uh, the earliest uh, markings used by the United States military in uh, World War II. So they entered the war with this marking on their aircraft and also on some uh, land vehicles. I believe it was also used on some initial tanks because, uh, well, um, the U.S. Army really was not marking, having a, a national marking on their uh, their tanks and stuff uh, before World War II and they thought we really needed to do something about that so they went ahead and, and used uh, the uh, this red white and blue um, star symbol the background is a, a dark blue circle you got the white star and then the red meatball in the middle um, and this is basically uh, a follow-up off of the round roundels that were used um, in um, U.S. Uh, Army Air Corps aircraft. Uh, they had a roundel that was red, white, and blue, similar to this, uh, similar to what the um, the British used in World War II and also in World War One. Matter of fact, that's where the roundels all, all seem to have um, started. Um, but they basically took the white circle and turned it into a star, and that became the uh, national symbol for the United States. Uh, um, shortly after the war started. Uh, there was concern that people would mistake this uh, red circle in the middle of the star for the emblem used by the uh, by the Empire of Japan, which was the big red circle on the side of their uh, uh, the Zero aircraft and other fighters and such. So, the with the Japanese using a red circle on their aircraft, they were worried about uh, friendly fire incidents and everything else. So they, the first thing they did was remove the uh, red circle and just make it a solid white star. And I believe that happened around 1941 or so. Uh, and then uh, shortly thereafter, they added uh, what are known as wings to the blue circle. So they'd be coming straight off from the side here, uh, aligned with this portion of the, uh, the star here. You would see the uh, 
the wings expanding out to the side with a little white uh, gash in the middle and then blue around the edges. Um, but that's how, and that eventually turned into the star that we're seeing today on, uh, on U.S. Army, I'm sorry, U.S. Air Force aircraft today. But originally this is what it looked like, uh, blue circle, uh, white star, and the red meatball in the middle. Yeah, that's what everyone called it. They called it the meatball. In any case, um, really cool design, but what I was not happy with and why it took me so long to go ahead and purchase it was because of the um, um, the Phillips driver. And I'm, I'm sure if you follow the SMKW Army group on Facebook, you saw me posting about um, why is it all you ever do is put out um, these specialty knives in the Tinker lineup. Why don't you do like other people do and uh, make these uh, handles available in other uh, series? And and um, I was immediately attacked by a few people basically saying, well, the Tinker is the best selling knife we have and that's why we do it. Uh, a few other people saying, yeah, I wish uh, we would do something like that. I don't know why we don't. So the reason is, is they figure, you know what? If you're not happy with the Tinker, tough because that's the one we're going to sell the most of. Um, and um, I, I don't think that's the best way to sell knives. I, I think you should try and appeal to other people other than just the people who buy the best selling knife. But uh, that's just my thought. Um, in any case, um, if you're seeing this video, that means that what I decided to do with this knife has worked. I'm sorry I've rambled on so long and um, I'm sorry I've been ranting about uh, my displeasure with every one of these knives coming out in a tinker. I, I guess, um, let's face it, I go and buy all sorts of uh, classic SDs. They don't bother me as much, but to tell you the truth, if uh, if somebody were to come out with specialty uh, ramblers or uh, um, other knives, um, what there's the rambler, there's the jet setter and those things, you know what? You put something like that on a jet setter, I would buy the jet setter too. I like the 58 millimeter lineup of knives. I would buy specialty skills on a rambler or anything else. Um, but I'm sick of buying Tinkers, so especially considering it's a knife I don't particularly like, and all I like on it is the scales. So uh, what I'm gonna try and do though, there I go and rant again. Anyway, what I plan on doing is taking this Hunter, removing the scales off of the Hunter, and then uh, swapping scales, putting these scales on my Hunter, and if that works out, well, then this video will be up and going. If it doesn't work out, well, I, I've just wasted about six or seven minutes of ranting uh, for nothing because I won't be putting this video up. In any case, let's see how it works out. Now, I have swapped Celador scales before, but these are different. These are ABS scales. I do not know how well these will react to uh, getting taken off the handle. I'm praying that they don't crack. I'm praying that I can actually uh, get them swapped over and super glued on to a hunter. We'll see how it goes. Let me start off by saying there are numerous uh, YouTube channels that give you step-by-step uh, -step instructions on how to remove the uh, scales off of your Swiss Army knife or swap scales on your Swiss Army knife. So. Uh, I would suggest going to one of those. Uh, that's where I learned how to do it. I just looked at one of them and, uh, and followed the directions more or less. Uh, most of them talk about submerging the knife in boiling water for a little bit to soften up the scales and pop them off. I don't know if that is necessary all the time, but I usually will use at least some hot water uh, to get it a little softer. And they always talk about entering uh, through the uh, toothpick or the uh, tweezer entry hole and then inserting something into that spot and um, and then going around to the edge and then popping off the scale slowly going around the edges and that is pretty much uh, what I do when I do these uh, scale swaps uh, uh, in this case uh, I'm using a um, 
spider code dragonfly in the past i've used a small screwdriver for eyeglasses uh, just about anything will work to get it uh, the thing is is go kind of slow and uh, take your time and remember there's three rivets that need to be popped off and then uh, just take your time doing it i have never done it using um, AVS scales. I've only done it with the Celador scales. I've never used the uh, done it uh, to nylon scales yet either. It's always been uh, just the Celador scales uh, and I've never had issues. This was the first time I tried it with ABS scales and uh, I was a little bit nervous doing that simply because ABS is a harder little more brittle plastic than the Celador scales. They have a little more flex to it. Uh, so I was very concerned that I might crack one of the uh, ABS scales. And most of the scales that have the nice print on them are made out of ABS plastic as opposed to Celador. Uh, so you just need to be a little slower, a little more cautious when doing the ABS, but it does seem to work out okay. In any case, uh, there you have it. That's what I did and uh, well, Let's get back to the main video. Okay, so far so good. All the handles came off relatively well. Uh, got a couple little nicks there on the end there, if you see, but nothing dramatic, uh, nothing that you wouldn't get from normal pocket wear. Um, the circles on the inside look pretty much complete. Um, that's just ABS plastic from the way it was drilled out to begin with. Um, that is not anything that I think shredded off uh, while peeling off the, uh, the covers or scales. Yes, they are called scales on a Swiss Army knife. I'm, I'm sorry all the uh, traditional guys out there who want to call them covers, uh, but these are actually called scales because they are attached to the liners. Here's the liner and the next layer would be the scales. And uh, what goes into these is known as scale tools. They're not known as uh, cover tools. So um, these are the scales of a Swiss Army knife. Now I'm going to end up swapping them out in a minute on this one. But before I go to that one, I'm going to, uh, well, do my uh, practice run on the Tinker and switch the handles back to what should be on there. One of the things I noticed that was uh, interesting uh, when I got these completely undone uh, is um, this Hunter is not that old, but if you notice the, uh, I'm sorry, Huntsman is not that old, but if you notice the liner on this one, the Alox liner on this one looks different than the one on here. So, um, and this is a, a newer one. So the uh, liners, um, the indentations on the liners have changed over the years. Well, let's turn them the same way. See how they look different? The indentations around the, the pivots and everything else, kind of different. Anyway, something you don't notice unless you take the knife apart. So let's go ahead and put this tinker back together. And uh, I will be doing it off screen, but basically what you do is um, you clean everything off, you dry it up and everything, and then you put a little drop of, um, of uh, crazy glue on the three uh, rivets here, and then you just snap them back on. Now, most people end up using a, uh, um, a press, you know, to hold it in place. I usually just snap them on with a pair of pliers, but so that I don't scratch them, I put a piece of cloth on it like so, and I snap them down. And quite frankly, unless the uh, holes here were severely damaged, you can usually just snap them right back on and no problem. And same thing with a brand new one. If you got a brand new uh, uh, scale that you're snapping on that has never been used, It'll just snap on. You don't really have to glue it or anything. But in any case, I'm just going to put a little drop of glue on there uh, as a safe bet. So I will do that off camera and be right back. Okay, I said off camera, but what I've done so far is put on the glue. Now, before you try to snap this on, make sure that you have the correct scale for the correct side and that you are not putting it on wrong. Um, for instance, the uh, the Victorinox shield should be at the top. 
this should be at the bottom. You know the bottom because of the um, the key ring. So you get it there, you place it in place, and press down and snap it on. Did you hear that snap? That's really good enough. At that point, you really don't need to do any kind of compression with a uh, with a vise or anything like that. Uh, you can if you want to, but that thing snapped back on there really well. So half my tinker is back together. What the heck? Let's see if I can be as lucky with the uh, a crazy glue again. You just really just a drop. My problem is I always worry about that stuff dripping out all over the place. So I try not to do it on camera. Because I screw it up all the time if I'm doing it on camera. This time it's working out pretty well. So I always give it a few seconds to let it, uh, you know, I let it kind of get sticky and thick. This side is much easier to remember because you've got the uh, Phillips driver on that side. And you got the cut out there. And so now all you got to do is, once again, just place it on, line it up, and start snapping it down. There's a snap. There's a snap. Now that one did not sound like a very good snap. So that's where I go and do this and press down to make sure it's on there. And you can take a look and you can see that, yeah, everything seems to be lined up. Everything is nice and tight and closed. So, the tinker is back together. I often also do this just for the heck of it. Remember, it was in a hot water bath, so there's still water inside the knife. I just dried off the, uh, the outside portion so far. And what I'm doing now is just making sure everything opens. And, uh closes because you never know so tinker is done <sighs> I knew that was gonna work now will I be able to get the ABS uh, handles onto my huntsman okay my apologies for not uh, showing you uh, step by step what I did with the uh, with the huntsman but um, it was basically the same thing I did with the um, with the Tinker. Um, only now the Huntsman has the uh, bomber scales on it from uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works. And uh, I did put in the uh, little drop of crazy glue. I had one minor issue and that was the uh, on the back side here. The two uh, pivots at the end were catching. The one in the middle wasn't, so I did need to use the uh, the um, pliers to push down a little bit. But once you hear that little snap that it snapped on, that's when you stop applying pressure. There's no reason to apply any extra pressure because you could break the handle or the, uh, the scale. So it uh, worked out really well. And now, instead of having a tinker, I have a huntsman with these really cool scales. And now I'm really happy with it. And, uh, well, I've got a tinker to give away. So that's pretty cool, too. In any case, uh, now that I know that it worked and worked fairly easily, I can actually say, yes, children, you can do it yourself. Like Ray Rayner used to always say at the end of uh, his shows when he would uh, do his do-it-yourself projects. Uh, and, and you can do it yourself. And... Uh, it is fairly easy. It took me all of 15-20 uh, minutes to do the whole job. Uh, and that was while talking about it. So it could have gone a whole lot faster. Uh, in any case, uh, now this uh, little sack snippet turned into almost a full feature. In any case, and I am very happy with my new handles or scales on this Huntsman very happy. Beats the snot out of a stupid tinker. Did I say that last thing out loud?
Let me take just a second to thank you once again for dropping by and spending a few minutes here at Knife Chats with the Pious. I really do appreciate it, and I do appreciate any comments that you leave. So please uh, remember to give me that thumbs up, and also don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode is up and running. Thanks again for dropping by. really do appreciate your time here.